The transplant has given me a whole new life all over again now since the last year and a half. Being able to fill my lungs with that air was an incredible feeling and something I hadn't been able to do for a long time. Since the transplant, I've had a young, uh, my second child. We were able to carry on a regular family life. There really haven't been significant changes in my life. Things have really carried on as normal. I run my own life now rather than a hospital running my life. It's, it's great. There's nothing more rewarding than seeing our transplant patients do well after their surgery. And part of those success stories that we see day in and day out in the transplant program is when patients take responsibility for their health. For patients and their families, there's a lot of information that they need to take in, a lot they need to know about, not only about caring for their organ, but for also being on guard for signs and symptoms of potential dangers, potential complications following the transplantation process. You and your transplant team work together to care for your new organ. And while rejection of your new organ is a complication faced by almost every transplant patient, in the majority of cases, it can be effectively treated. You may experience some or all of the signs and symptoms of rejection when it occurs. Or you may feel completely normal, showing no signs and symptoms, and still be having rejection. This is why your transplant team schedules regular blood tests and biopsies. These tests are the only way your transplant team can be certain about whether rejection is occurring. Within the first year of transplantation, at least half of the patients will experience some form of rejection. As long as the rejection is recognized early and the transplant team is notified, they can treat this. It is something that can be dealt with fairly easily. We just need to know about it so we can treat it with the appropriate treatment methods, usually starting with medication. We want patients to know that rejection does not always mean you're going to lose your transplanted organ. It means that there's something going on with the immune system that we need to attend to as soon as possible. All transplant patients are prescribed drugs that affect their immune system. The immune system is your body's natural defense against invasion from cold and flu viruses, bacteria, and other foreign bodies, including your new organ. The immune system operates through the bloodstream. Here, specific types of cells, called T cells, are on constant lookout for foreign invaders. When they recognize something that doesn't belong, for example, a cold virus, they send out a signal, bringing in whole armies of other T cells to kill off the invader. In the case of your new organ, the T cells would recognize the walls of the tissue within the new organ as being different from the rest of your body, and the attack process would begin. It is the immunosuppressive drugs that help prevent this attack, and therefore help prevent rejection from occurring. While your prescribed medications affect your defense system and protect your new organ, they also lower your resistance to other health complications. It is therefore very important to take your medications exactly as prescribed, monitor the results very closely, and report any signs or symptoms as soon as you notice them. When I was waiting for my transplant, you hear rejection, and you hear about patients who maybe were transplanted before you who are now suffering from rejection, and that is a word that comes with a lot of fear. And when I came out of the, the anesthetic, they said, you will have rejection. Don't take it personally, but you'll have it. And I believe it was about two months after, maybe a little bit less, I had a low-grade rejection. The signs and symptoms of rejection are different for each type of organ transplant. Let's begin with the kidney. We ask all of our patients at home to watch for basically three separate signs of rejection. The first of these is any temperature of 37.5 or more needs to be reported immediately to your transplant team. The second sign and symptom is pain around the kidney itself. Uh, you should feel your kidney each day and any new sign of pain besides the incision pain also needs to be reported immediately. The third symptom is really a set of symptoms that tell us that your kidney is not putting out the water that it should be. And those specific things are uh, sudden weight gain of a kilo in 24 hours, swelling of your hands and your feet, a sudden increase in your blood pressure over your normal readings, and a sudden decrease in your urine output over what your normal urine output is. 
and all of those signs and symptoms, even one of them, needs to be reported immediately to us. If a patient does have a rejection diagnosis, and this is usually confirmed by doing a transplant biopsy, then it usually means that we need to make an adjustment in the medications. The treatment varies between individuals according to the type of rejection, according to the severity of the rejection, and according to the period of time post-transplant. Sometimes the patients will be required to be admitted. Other times we can treat the patients as outpatients. The success rate in treating rejection episodes is really very, very good. It's rare for a patient to lose a kidney transplant as a result of a rejection episode, and probably at least 95% of patients would have their rejection reversed with early treatment uh, of the episode with medications. The most important thing for the patients to do is to call and report any signs and symptoms they're having. Sometimes we reassure them, sometimes we uh, offer suggestions, but the most important thing is to call and let us know. For kidney pancreas transplant patients, the signs and symptoms of rejection are very similar to those in the kidney transplant patient. As for all transplant patients, a fever of 37.5 degrees Celsius or 99.5 Fahrenheit is the first sign to watch for. They should never wait and see if the fever goes because the fever may change, uh, it may become quite normal in the evening, but it's still an indicator and should be reported immediately to your transplant team. The second uh, common uh, symptom is uh, pain or tenderness over the kidney and the pancreas. Often the pain and tenderness over the kidney and pancreas is due to the inflammation that occurs due to rejection. And the pain and tenderness may be difficult to assess if it's immediately post uh, surgery because you will have some pain and tenderness on your incision line. However, two or three weeks down the road you shouldn't have pain and tenderness when you feel your kidney or your pancreas. Retention of fluid is, is another symptom. Uh, this may be shown in your hands. You may get some swelling in your hands. Your rings might not fit. Uh, they may be a little stiff. Your ankles uh, some swelling in your ankles and your face might get a little puffy, especially around the eyes. Weight gain of anything between one to two kilograms over a 24-hour period is a concern and you should certainly let your transplant team know. Although we don't ask you to measure your urine output every single day as you do in hospital, you should be aware of how often you go to the washroom and approximately the volume you're putting out you'll notice change in volume. You may be going less frequently. Uh, you may be putting out less amounts of urine at that time. These, again, are important symptoms. The kidney acts as a, a signal uh, for uh, rejection. Normally, the pancreas doesn't really show a great deal as far as rejection is concerned, but the kidney does. I felt pain over the kidney, and I felt I called my coordinator right away, and I told her, and she told me to come down the hospital and they checked me over and I was fine. Well I had been told that um, every transplant patient experiences rejection at some point to expect it, that it was not um, to be that alarming and that to watch for the signs of it and alert the, uh, the hospital immediately. I started feeling pain over the kidney area again and I didn't call as soon as I should have. I waited a few days instead of calling right away but they, they took care of me. They gave me the anti the medication for it and I was fine after that. I went through a number of stages of rejection myself and um, I think when I look back at it I don't know whether it was all that manageable but we did get through it. I found that um, I felt great but the blood work showed that rejection was occurring. That means that they caught it early and so they treated it right away and uh, it was taken care of. Blood tests are important for all transplant patients. They may indicate to your transplant team that rejection is occurring. For liver transplant patients, as with all transplant patients, the risk of rejection is greatest in the first three months post-transplant. The uh, common signs and symptoms that we tell our patients to look for are an increase in jaundice, uh, so to look in the mirror first thing in the morning and to uh, check their eyes, make sure that uh, if there's an increase in jaundice, if their eyes have gotten yellower or they notice it in their skin, to let us know. Dark urine, 
which would tell us again about the jaundice, and pale stools would tell us that bile isn't going through the GI tract and the liver isn't doing the job that it used to be able to do. Also, decrease in appetite, nausea or vomiting, new abdominal pain or ache in the right side, persistent fatigue, ascites, itchiness, Temperature is very important to monitor. It's something we ask the patient to do every morning and maybe every night or sometime during the day if they feel a little bit strange. And there's a magic number to do with the temperature. And that magic number is 37.5. And when it's 37.5, we ask the patient to call us. The most important thing is for them to be our eyes and ears at home. And if they see anything that's different, anything that we've told them about, the signs and symptoms they're to look for, they're to call us. When I experienced rejection, uh, initially I really didn't know what was happening. I was just getting tired, but slowly I was getting tired. Um, I was losing a little bit of weight, just gradually, like a pound or two during the month. And it was a very vague feeling for me. I, in fact, was sitting waiting to meet with a doctor over one of my infection situations and uh, in the waiting room uh, a friend of mine who was with me said gee John you're you're a little yellow in your eyes and uh, so in a matter of minutes we were on the telephone with the doctors here at the hospital. Although blood work is important for monitoring drug levels and other health indicators biopsy is the only way to diagnose cardiac rejection. Heart transplant patients need to be especially alert for subtle signs of changes in their health. We teach people to report to us uh, an increased shortness of breath, increased weight gain, uh, fevers, uh, feeling unwell, because they could be on indication that the heart is not working properly and that there is some rejection starting. But the only way to diagnose cardiac rejection is with the cardiac biopsy. Because uh, that is the only way we have, it is very important that patients come for their biopsies on the specific dates. And cardiac biopsies are performed at regular specific intervals uh, for the rest of the recipient's uh, life with the transplant. Cardiac rejection doesn't mean that a patient loses their heart, it means that we have to treat the rejection. The way we treat cardiac rejection is by increasing the doses of drugs. During that time, patients may experience some of the increased side effects of the drugs, but after the treatment, we again lower the drugs down to baseline therapy and those side effects even out. I get a little tired, um, but I really don't know that I have it. Um, until I go and have a biopsy and they phone me and say you have rejection, raise your medicine up. I didn't have any symptoms at all. The only way that I knew was from the biopsy and uh, because I had, a biops I had a biopsy, I got a phone call that night and they, they said come to the hospital. I came into the hospital and it was a fair, I guess, uh, you know, what they class a fairly serious rejection. For lung transplant patients, there are a number of potential signs and symptoms of rejection. And even though your spirometer readings and pulmonary function tests are followed on a regular basis, the only way to definitively diagnose lung rejection is by bronchoscopy. A patient who's had a lung transplant, um, if they're having some rejection, they may end up finding that they're more short of breath. Their handheld spirometer, their force expiratory volume in a second, their FEV1, may have reduced. Uh, we're concerned about a drop of 10% that's persistent for 24 to 48 hours. Uh, they may have some cough along with that, as well as a reduction in their exercise tolerance. So the uh, two flights of stairs that have never been a problem may be a little bit more difficult for them to undertake at that time, as well as just feeling generally unwell and typically a, a fever that will go along with that. If the patients are experiencing any of those signs, they're to call the transplant coordinator or speak to the transplant physicians about those signs. And when the patients come into the hospital, we'll do a, a chest x-ray to see if there's any infiltrates. We'll do pulmonary function tests to determine whether the forced expiratory volume or the FEV1 is truly reduced in the lab, as well as to review their symptoms to determine whether it could be something else that's going on as opposed to rejection. 
If the patient is experiencing rejection, they'll go on to get some additional medication to treat that rejection. And within a couple of days to a couple of weeks, they'll start to feel a lot better. The fevers will be gone. Their forced expiratory volume in a second, their FEV1, will return back to normal. I also had rejection probably for the first uh, year and a half. Every bronchoscopy that I had uh, showed uh, grade two rejection. You need to find out what your usual spirometry is and if it starts to fall below a certain level, which your coordinator will give you the levels to watch for, then that's one of the key things is to make sure you let them know what's going on so they can investigate it further. One of the big problems I had immediately afterwards was uh, getting my cyclosporin levels evened out. That took a long time. Uh, they were very variable and one day they'd be very uh, very low, the next day extremely, extremely high. It's important, I think, for patients to remember that rejection is a normal part of a post-transplant course. Most patients experience at least one episode of rejection, and we expect it and anticipate it, which is why we teach patients about rejection, so that they can help us detect it and treat it early, so that it just becomes a part of the tr normal transplant course. I think it's also important to remember that some patients may not have all of these signs and symptoms. They may have one, um, or they may have none. They may, they may complain of just feeling generally very lethargic um, and really non-specific type symptoms. And that's where blood work is very important and monitored on a very regular basis. It is important to know the signs and symptoms of rejection for the type of organ transplant you have had. Rejection of your new organ is a complication that can be dealt with when it is recognized early and the transplant team is notified. Remember to have your blood work and tests done as directed by your transplant team and to notify your transplant coordinator or physician as soon as you notice any potential signs or symptoms of rejection. There is pain, but in the long run, you're very happy and you have your life ahead of you. Well, every day I have really is a gift. Uh, if I have one more day, that's wonderful. If I have 20 more years, that's better, that's fantastic. As long as you know that when you get your transplant, it's, it's not just going to be a bed of roses. You might have to fight every once in a while again, like you've done in the past. Infection and rejection can be serious complications for transplant patients, but when we work together, transplant patient and transplant team, we can make sure that the healthiest outcomes are possible.